All right, the numbers are rolling, as it were. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, and please read along with me at some of the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, of what we will be reading today, okay? Read along with me, be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me, because sometimes the mouth goes quicker than the brain. So please, read along with me. We're going to be trying something a little different here. A little different. Um, this whole thing here is going to be a two-part video. And basically, what we are going to be uh, tackling is the topic of questions. Now we all know about, not all of us, excuse me, but most of the saints are aware of about, you know, avoiding foolish questions and uh, contentions about the law, strifes about the law and genealogies and that kind of stuff. We know that. Why? Because there are questions that are asked where people don't want to know the truth, but want to cause strife and debate. We, we kind of covered this in the previous video. But um, especially with, um, with atheists and a lot of these Christians who ask questions whose answers they don't want to know, who will, if you answer one question, they'll come up with another and another and another and another. And they don't work along with you, but they ask these questions to trip you up or to try to prove something to themselves, or whatever it is. It's for strife. And these are questions that we ought to avoid, okay, and not get into involved in this never-ending cycle, okay? The only way a, a cycle like that is going to end is if one, it's like, that's it, okay? All right? But, um... This is something that we're going to be addressing, and we're going to be addressing the book of Job, okay? The book of Job. And what we have written down here is not going to be done in one sitting. There's just way too much, okay? So this is going to be a two-part video. Both parts of these videos, uh, I, the notes are here, got them ready to go, but... Both parts are not going to be done today, okay? I've done that recently where I've uploaded two videos in one day. That's whatever, but something like this, no. Something like this, no, okay? Um, the main bulk of what I'd like us to look at and consider is the book of Job in its entirety. We're not going to read the whole book of Job, obviously, but we're, we're going to glean through parts of the book of Job because when you consider it, the book of Job is a book of questions in a way. But we will address that later. First and foremost, let us begin in the book of Psalms. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, the name of Jesus Christ, God our Father. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What are his benefits? Oh, healthy, wealthy, and wise, right? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Some will be like, especially these wicked charismatics, you know, well, you know, God will heal you. The healing, you got to remember, is what disease is being addressed. God can heal any disease if he chose. Yes, he can. You know, you read about how our Lord uh, cleansed leprosy. He healed people and uh, he gave power unto his apostles for signs unto the Jews, for signs unto the Jews to heal and stuff like that. We have that documented in Scripture. But the ultimate disease, dis-ease, that mankind has is a soul sickness, is a soul disease. Because man, because of the fall, man believes himself to be righteous. Man, because of the fall, 
They think man thinks that he is his own God, being able to judge accurately, rightly, what is good and what is evil. Okay? Keep that in mind. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Verse 4 kind of expounds a little bit on verse 3. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. And like it says in Romans chapter 12, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind. And when you have a diseased soul that thinks that you are your own God, what, what kind of the level of the mind accompanies with someone who thinks they are their own God? Like every, atheists do not exist, okay? Uh, like, like a brother said in comment in the previous video, praise the Lord for that comment. I'll pin that when I get around to it if I remember. Um, atheist is dead. Atheist, not believing in a God. There is no such thing. Every single one of you atheists, you are your own God, okay? You decide what is good and what is evil. You are your own God, okay? There is no such a thing as an atheist. They don't exist, okay? Because what is your standard of judgment? Hmm? It's you. Okay? Atheists don't exist. You don't want to believe in the God of the scriptures, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You don't want to believe on him. That's evidence. So Satan, you know, who wants to be God? See, you atheists who believe that you are your own God, you do. You do. You can try to sidestep it all you want. You are your own standard for what is right and what is wrong. Period. Hence, ye are of your father, the devil, who wants to be God himself. I will be like the Most High. Okay? All right? All right. So when you think that you are your own God, what accompanies that mind? Let's continue here. Verse 6. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. For all that are oppressed. And you look around at what's going on in the news with what may be coming in October. Okay. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. People who are in disease, who are diseased, diseased in the soul. Okay. All right. He executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. That's, that's something that's very comforting. The Lord gets over it. The Lord will get over it sooner or later. And you got to remember, God is outside of our time. Okay, God is not bound by time. You and I, this earth is bound by time. God isn't. Okay, you got to remember that. God will get over things sooner or later. Okay, which is a good rebuke on to us as man who want to keep a grudge and want to keep something going and going and going and going and going and going. Okay? He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. If he did, if, you know, when someone asks me, and I, I, I've taken to this by our beloved brother Alexander B. Hartley. Um, how you doing? 
better than I deserve. You ask a sleazy believism heretic that. Okay, well, I'm better than others. See, they, they have this little fake humility, but every single one of these fake gracer, uh, sleazy believism heretics, every single solitary one of y'all, sooner or later it'll come out that, well, I'm better than so-and-so. Yeah. See, every single one of us, even us saved saints, deserve death, hell, and the grave. He hath not dealt with us after our sins. If he did, if he were, if he did, there wouldn't be a single one of us left. We'd all go up like a puff. See, these fake gracers have no concept of what grace is. They can define it from a dictionary. They can maybe even try to define it through scripture, but they themselves have no concept what grace is. Just like certain people have no true concept of what liberty is when they seek to justify yoking themselves up with Rome as a means of liberty. But we, we, we ain't going off on that. Okay, they don't have any true concept of it. They have no, the people, these fake gracers, sleazy believists, they have no concept of true grace. None. Okay. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. See, this is why brokenness is so imperative, which the sleazy believism heretic, that yes, you do avoid it, because what do you do? We're all sinners. You hide under the umbrella that we're all sinners, hence yoking yourself up with the multitude, hence skirting personal accountability contrition. Anyway, for as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Mm -hmm. When he saves you, for our instruction and in righteousness today, when he saves you, you come to him on his terms, broken, contrite. And in fear of the Lord, you call upon his name, you, you scream out, Lord, save me. It's not a mental ascent. It's far greater than just that. Yes, mental ascent is involved. Yes, it is. How do you reach that? Hmm? How do you reach that true point by being broken, having contrition, and fear of the Lord. That's how. Which the sleazy believest oversteps every single time. Okay? Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. This is, again, why no one should fear man, okay? Because even though that flesh may look beautiful, like the all the colored the stones that the anointed cherub Satan has, okay? Even though that flesh might look good, right? right? Why does sin look so good, right? You got to remember, it's dust. It's dirt. We're dirt, okay? And you got to remember this. Verse 10, he hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Even as a saint, I deserve death, hell, and the grave. Okay? The thought of foolishness is sin. Okay? With some of the thoughts that I've had as a saved man, if he dealt with us after our sins and our iniquities, I'd be in hell. <laughs> just because of some of the thoughts I have to this day. Okay? Memories are my worst enemy. Okay? They really are. Uh, but anyway, let's continue. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone. 
and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. The fear of the Lord. And unto man, he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. Okay? But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. And his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Dispensational difference. Okay? The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Yes, again, God is in control. Okay? We talked about this in the previous video. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. The voice of his word. We covered this in the previous video pretty good. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Dear young brother, I said the same thing you did. Kicking and screaming. And here we are today. He's not going to force you, son. He won't. I mean, God doesn't force anybody. But he can surely influence your decision. Surely. Be aware of that, son. Okay? Anyway. Bless the Lord all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. We're dust, we're dirt. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Verse 10. Okay? Verse 14. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. Okay? God's mercy is unfathomable. He saved me. God's grace is beyond our comprehension. It really is. I mean, we can get a basic grasp of what it is, God's grace, and how, how big, how beautiful God's grace is. But you know what? Mankind falls short. Saints who have truly saved people who have a basic understanding of grace, whereas the false, the sleazy believers, they don't even begin to have the comprehension of grace. They don't. They don't. Grace is unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. And what could God's true grace be to someone who saves themselves? Yeah. Why am I here, right? Why am I here? <laughs> why, why am I here? Why did God make me? Why, why, right? Revelation 4.11 Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure they are and were created. Why did God make me? Because he wanted to. Why did God make the earth? Because he wanted to. And also on that, like we covered in the previous video, Isaiah chapter 45, one verse, Isaiah 45, verse 18. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. Okay? All right? Why? <laughs> why God do this? Why? 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 
And like I said, the book of Job is, when you consider it, when you glean through it, is a book of questions. It truly is. It truly is. Now, when it comes to this thing of questions, the very first question in Scripture, the very first question in Scripture is in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent, Satan, hold your place here, Revelation chapter 12, okay, Revelation, Revelation chapter 12, okay, Revelation chapter 12, verses, oh, oh, let's see. <laughs> One second, please. Revelation 12, verses 9 and 10. And that great dragon, remember dragon, was cast out. That old serpent. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Subtle, like using someone who's not all there in their lacabesa to fight his battles that he started. Ugh. You're scum, man. You know who you are, who I'm addressing. You're scum, using that poor imbecile to fight your battles for you. Ugh. Anyway. And that great dragon, Revelation 12, 9 and 10, was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Christ means anointed one. Okay. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. The accuser of the brethren. And in the book of Job, which we will be going over in the next video, you see Zophar, Eliphaz, and Bildad all make accusation against Job. But let's continue in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. The very first question in all recorded scripture. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? That's the first question in scripture. And the very first recorded question in scripture for us is what? Comes from Satan. And what is he doing? He's questioning what God has said. Okay? Now, there's nothing wrong with questions when you want answers. Okay? You also got to remember, God is not obligated to answer all your questions. There's a reason for that. Go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Okay? James chapter 1. I'll get there. If you're there, okay. James chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 8. If any of you lack wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Wisdom, the foundation for knowledge. Okay? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Hold your place there. Hebrews 11. What is faith? Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Again. How can it be by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden? How can it be by grace through faith 
in the kingdom of heaven when you people who get left behind or whatever when you are going to stand before the lord personally uh in the kingdom of heaven giving an account to him okay how is it by grace through faith in the kingdom of heaven idiot okay Oh, and while we're in Hebrews 11, verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Written for the Hebrews during the time of Jacob's trouble, the book of Hebrews is, just like the book of James. Just remember that. Now let's continue in James. Verse 6, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in, in, is unstable in all his ways. And how often do we saints run into people who will ask questions whose answers they don't want to know. They just ask those questions to cause strife and debate. They're double-minded. They think they are, they are their own God, so they will ask questions of us to try to trip us up, up so they can prove themselves that they are their own God. Okay? They don't believe God is, but yet they believe in a God themselves. Okay? And remember, God is not obligated to answer all your questions. But see, a babe in Christ comes to the Lord with all kinds of questions, don't you? But see what happens in time as you grow in your walk with the Lord, as you have your senses exercised thereby, as you base your life upon the scriptures, especially from the Pauline Epistles Doctrine for us today. Faith grows, experience grows, hope grows. <laughs> patience grows and the longer you walk with our Lord all those questions you, we still have questions yes we do but they start to diminish as faith increases as grace increases as hope increases as experience patience increases that comes with time okay Okay, that comes with time. How many of you saints have encountered these people? It's like, <clears throat> when I get before the Lord, I have all these questions I'm going to ask him. Really? Really? Good luck. Good luck. Stonewall, you know, they put their arms on the thing as a visual of stonewalling you, you know. Yeah. yeah. The longer you walk with the Lord, our questions don't go away, but they become less and less important in the light of faith. Safe people, you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who have walked with our Lord for any length of time, above at least five years, you know what I'm talking about. Even those who are of only five years or even two or three years uh, also understand that. That as you increase in faith, as you increase in wisdom, the fear of the Lord, the answers that you, the questions that you have, some of them will be answered, some of them will not be. Okay? But see, saints, when we come to the Lord, it's like, okay, Lord, I don't understand what you're talking about in your word. Spirit of truth, he will lead you, guide you into all truth, okay? Okay? But see, verse 6, But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. You have to believe that the Lord is, and the Lord is infinite in wisdom. Nothing, nothing in comparison to us. Okay? And see, that's where the atheist makes his error because they think they are their own God. They are their own standard of judgment. Every single one of them. Okay? Now, go back to Genesis. Go back to Genesis 
But go now to Genesis chapter 4. The very first question in all of recorded scripture that was asked was asked of who? Satan. And it was questioning what God said. And that's happening even today. Okay? But what about when God asks a question? Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 7. Now, Genesis chapter 4 is very significant. Why? Because it is the beginning of the dispensation known as the patriarchal period. The patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? It is during the patriarchal period that God called Abraham, Abram, out from amongst his kindred. Why? To establish the Hebraic line from whence Jesus Christ is come in the flesh would come. Okay? He took Abraham out from his kindred to establish, to create the Hebraic line. You look up the word Hebrew. It is first mentioned in light of Abram, who would become Abraham. Okay? And the faith, you got to remember, the patriarchal period is similar to the uh, dispensation that we are in today. Big difference. The faith is what, was go what God was going to do. You look at Noah. You look at Abraham. Okay? What he was going to do. All right? With the flood. He was, he was going to destroy the world with flood. Okay? It was what he was going to do. Also, the Lord was not a permanent seal in any believer during the patriarchal period. Okay? That is specific for us today in this dispensation and during the time of Jacob's trouble for the 144,000 Hebrews Jews. Okay? That's it. All right? Not so in the patriarchal period. And plus, Christ didn't die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures. It wasn't finished yet. Okay? You know that where it says in Romans they go from faith to faith? Okay? All right, that's what that's talking about. So it's similar. Yes, but not exact. Watch out for people who tell you that this dispensation is identical to the dispensation of the patriarchal period. Because during the patriarchal period, there were an element of works that had to be done. Noah and the ark. Okay? Abraham, Abram, go! Okay? All right? You have to remember that. The two dispensations, today and the patriarchal period, are similar, not identical, okay? But this, Genesis 4, is the beginning of the patriarchal period, okay? The second dispensation, okay? All right? The first dispensation in Scripture, the Garden of Eden, all works. They didn't need faith because they could see God, okay? All right? So, that's very important to remember. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 7. And Adam knew his wife. We had relations with her. And she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel, Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Okay? Now you got to remember, Abel died before the flood. Cain's line, I believe, and uh, the lost tribes and the serpent seed thing, which was also in the previous video, will be in the description box, okay? The line of Cain was extinguished during the flood, okay? The line of Cain, okay? All right? Cain's line was extinguished, all right? All right, we talk about that in other videos. So, but both Abel and Cain, both their line died. Uh, Abel died before the flood. Cain's line, his uh, lineage died during the flood. Okay, we document that in other videos. So let's continue. Verse three, and in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. 
And Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flock, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Why didn't God accept Cain's offering? Well, very simply, Genesis chapter 1. You know, plants, veggies, vegetation, trees, you lovely tree huggers. Trees need oxygen. Plants have to need chlorophyll, right? But here's the thing. Plants, trees, and stuff like that, even though they have need oxygen, um, um, chlorophyll with the plants and whatnot, you got to remember something. Plants, veggies, vegetation, trees, and stuff like that are not counted alive as the Lord counts a beast and man. Genesis chapter 1, verses 29 on to verse 31. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. Hmm. And many of you environmentalists, you like, well, you know, you break a piece off of a plant and it will actually have a form of blood, not actual blood like a uh, man or beast because the life is in the blood, okay? Life is in the blood, right? But plants, trees don't have blood like mankind or even beasts do, okay? They don't. They don't, okay? God does not count the plant alive as man or beast. Let's continue. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. Very important there. Very important there. Yes, Plants, veggies, trees, and stuff, especially after the flood, they need oxygen. Uh, plants have what? Chlorophyll and other things, okay? But what don't a tree have? They don't have a spirit and they don't have a soul, okay? You can argue, well, plants have a body, not like, you know, not like us or even a beast like Fluffy or Dog or Fritz the Cat. Okay, but you could say, well, uh, what well, you call a tree, isn't that a body? Okay, okay, whatever. But plants, trees, vegetation, you dear tree huggers, you tam tambourine bangers, <laughs> okay, um, they're not alive in the sense as man or even a beast. Because look at that verse, don't look at me. Look at verse 30. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, Wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Mm. And also, you got to remember about animals. Okay, animals. You young children out there, um, kids, <laughs> I remember this one poor young man who got really mad at me because the kids, children, if you watch them, the truth is your pet is not going to be in heaven with you. I know you love your dog. I know you love your cat or your ferret or wabbit. Wabbits are cute, okay? I know you love your animals as pets, and I know that your pets grow on you and become part of your family. It's devastating. Like George Carlin, Carlin even said, you know, life is a series of dogs, right? You're buying an eventual little tragedy, okay? That's the fact. 
but it is also the fact, okay? Your pets are not going to be with you in heaven, okay? And to teach that and to say that is erroneous error. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 21, okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 21. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward? Is it, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. Okay? And the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. I get it. I get it. I, you know, when Fritz died, when I killed Fritz, excuse me, I had him killed. Um, it was devastating, but after it was done, it was like he's gone back to the earth. Fritz, my cat, he's not in heaven waiting for me. Duke, my old dog, my old pit bull, is not waiting in heaven for me. Nico is not waiting for me in heaven. I'm sorry, people. That's just the fact of the matter. Plants don't have a spirit. You can make your argument that they have a body. Okay, you can make not like like us, like man, or like uh, even an animal. Okay, you can make that argument, but plants don't have a spirit. And you know what animals and plants don't have? Genesis chapter 1. Go back to Genesis chapter 1. Okay, Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 on to verse 27 now. God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. We addressed this in the previous video, which will be in the description box of this video. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Okay? Genesis chapter 2, 1 verse, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Okay. Now, before the fall, man was created immortal and sinless. And they had one job to do. Don't eat of the one tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's a work, Jack. Genius, okay? They had one thing to do. Don't do that. They did it. Okay? But they were originally created sinless and immortal. But also spirit, soul, and body. After the fall, when sin came in, sin came in, and death through sin, man brought, de uh, man brought death into the world. Death did not bring man into the world. You crazy evolutionist. Blah, crazy. Okay? All right? Man brought death into the world. Hence, that one part of that perfect, perfection, innocence, was gone. But yet still, man is made in the image of God. You have a spirit. Even the worst of you devils, you have a spirit. You have a soul. And you have a body. I know that is irksome that the guys who hate our Lord the most are made in the image of God. They have a spirit. They have a soul. They have a body. They are a person. Even though they act like animals, they are a person. Okay, and see, an animal has a spirit, and the blood of life is also, because you read about how you're not supposed to drink blood in three different dispensations, okay, all right, that drinking blood like the Catholics, you, they believe that they, the Jesuit priest with the woody, 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 that they make the blood, <laughs> the wine, actual blood of Jesus, Contrary to scripture, okay, crazy Catholics, all right, 
Life is in the blood. You read about that in Leviticus 17? Uh, Leviticus 17? Uh, that, yeah, Leviticus 17, verse 11. Leviticus 17, verse 11. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, let me see. Verses 10 and 11. No, 10 on the 12. In Leviticus 17. And whosoever and whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood and will cut him off from among his people. Now, the environmentalists, you know, save the planet tree hugger, tree hugger, tambourine banger out there. It's like, well, plants have blood. Not in the context as God equates blood. Okay? All right? You go shoot a horse in the head. The blood is going to be red. Okay? You sock me in the face and you give me a bloody lip, my blood's going to be red. I sock you in the lip, your blood is going to be red. Okay? You can, you know, the blood of the grape, right? The blood of the grape. Red, meaning red, okay? There's a difference there. It's not the blood that is in man or even in animals, okay? There's a difference there. And scripturally, the blood that is found in animals and man, okay? Not like plants or anything like that. You have to remember that, okay? Because like I said, the environmentalist tree hugger tambourine banger, you know, it's like, well, they are alive just like you and I are. No, they're not. Look, you know, hey, you want to you be an environmentalist? Go ahead, knock yourself out. Go, go for it. Go for it. But see, nowadays they're trying to, th you know, plants are more important than Man, animals are more important than man. That's one of the rungs of feminism, okay? All right? Listen, okay? A plant doesn't have a spirit, and it doesn't have a soul. And we saw in the creation account that the intent of vegetation plants were for meat, for everything, okay? Plants, trees, you cannot make your argument about, you know, well, a tree is actually, that's its body. I'm not going to argue that with you, okay, because that's a waste of time. But they don't have a spirit. No matter what the Wiccans, the witches want you to believe, no, even though even some of the dear Hinduist, Hinduists and Taoists and Buddhists want you to believe that trees and plants have spirits and no. They don't, okay? They don't. Plants, trees, and whatnot, they don't have a spirit. They don't have a soul. Animals, they have a body. They have a spirit. They don't have a soul. Man has a spirit, soul, and body, okay? All right, now let's continue here in Leviticus. And who, whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or the strangers that sojourn among you that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth the blood and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. Now this is under the law. And you read in the book of Hebrews about the blood of bulls of goats could never permanently take away sin. But the blood of God, the sinless, perfect blood of God, that takes away sin. Okay? Okay? And, and, and then again, you know, people have jumped on me about, well, you said the flesh of Jesus Christ was sinful. It was. But see, he kept the law perfectly. Hence, that sinful flesh was sanctified because he kept the law perfectly, which no man except God in flesh could do. 
We've answered that. You want to bring that up again? I'm just going to continually, even if I got to put that video a hundred times in the community section, your, your ridiculous argument has been answered. Okay? So shut up. All right? So the blood of God, because he kept the law perfectly, hence it was precious, sinless, even though the flesh itself was sinful. Okay? Jesus never sinned. Okay? Never sinned. He kept the law perfectly. That's why that sinful flesh was sanctified and that blood was perfect because he never sinned. Okay? That's how that works. Verse 12. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. Okay? Notice soul. Animals don't have soul, people. I'm just, that's just the way it is. Plants have not a spirit or soul. Don't believe what the stupid little witches and the Buddhists and the Hinduists tell you. That plants have spirits behind them and souls are... But that's nonsense. Not according to the God who created all this. Okay? Now go back to Genesis chapter 4, okay? Genesis chapter 4. So why did God reject Cain's offering and took Abel's? For what we just said, okay? The beast has a spirit and blood, okay? A plant. The fruit of the offering. And I understand about in the Torah about you bring the first fruits. Okay? That's a different subject. That's a different kind. What that's talking about. Hey, you gave me this. I'm giving you the first fruits. Okay? It's not that the plants themselves are alive in the sense as what God considers alive. It's like, here, you gave me the first fruits. Here they are back to you. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Don't confuse that. Okay? All right? Cain got into the dirt. He brought it to pass. He watered it. He nourished it. And he brought to God something that eventually will wither, okay? Which had no spirit and no soul. And see, an animal doesn't have a soul, but it has a spirit. Hence, that's why God accepted Abel's offering and rejected Cain because as we have already shown okay as we have already shown okay the plants were originally all the vegetation and stuff like that were for the service of man even the beasts and the creeping things were to eat that okay all right and as it has been said that man was you can make the very valid argument that man was originally created to be a vegetarian at the least, vegan at the most. Okay? You can. And even the beasts weren't going around tearing up uh, antelopes or zebras or whatever. Okay? Even the, the creatures, the beasts, were vegetarians. Okay? That's why God rejected Cain's offering. Now, let's pick up verses 6 and 7 in Genesis chapter 4. God's question. And the first appearance of the word, why? And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? The first question in Scripture, Satan asked, Yea, hath God said? Questioning what God said. The first question in recorded scripture that God asked, Why art thou wroth? To Cain, who brought the Lord as his offering. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Now the first fruits... Like I said, in the Torah, under the law, that's a different kind of thing. That's like, okay, you have given me this. I'm giving you the very first fruits, the green ears. Okay, here, this is, you know, commanded like, hey, give it back to you. Okay, totally different thing. Okay, totally different thing. And remember, 
Remember, on the law, it was animal sacrifices and stuff like that, okay? The first fruit thing is a totally different, totally different. Don't confuse it with this, okay? And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy, thou, and why is thy countenance fallen? Visage, face, countenance, body. If thou doest well, Shalt thou not be accepted? Okay? See, fruit of the ground, you can you can control it. You can water it. You can nourish it. Nourish it. You can take things out of it. Something of your flock, okay? Oh, you can, you know, like pile white strakes and the whatnot and put it in the troughs to make them breed or whatnot. But they bring life of themselves. Okay? Totally different thing. All right? thou doest well shalt thou not be accepted and if thou doest not well sin lieth at the door and unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him mm. and of course Cain's countenance fell okay because God didn't accept his offering of something that he originally created for man and the beast to feed off of okay that's why he rejected Cain's offering. Well, one moment, please. All right, excuse me. I have chapped lips like crazy. <laughs> now, now comes a point where I have to publicly repent of something. Okay? Publicly repent of something and say I was wrong. I was wrong about something. About the book of Job. And some of the videos that the Lord has given me, and some of you brethren are aware of this as well, I have stated publicly that I had believed that the book of Job was before the flood, that the whole timeline of Job was before the flood. I have said that in several videos. Which ones? I don't remember. I've talked with brethren about this, and they're kind of like, huh. Okay, you know, I have said publicly that I had believed that the book of Job was before the flood. I was wrong about that. I, hi, I'm, okay, I'm admitting a uh, fault, okay, I'm repenting, changing my stance on this because of scriptural evidence, okay? I no longer believe that the book of Job was before the flood. I believe that the book of Job was after the flood, not before the flood. And you want to know what did it for me? Cold. Huh? Huh? I have to address this. I, this has to be addressed. Okay? This has to be addressed. Now, the book of Job... The book of Job is a book that is primarily, like I said, a book of questions, but it is also a book that is quite plentiful in instruction in righteousness. Okay? In James chapter 5, in James chapter 5, James chapter 5, we have verses 10 and 11, okay? Getting a little ahead of ourselves here, but I, I want to address this to you. James chapter 5, verses 10 and 11. Now, the book of Hebrews and the book of James are books specifically written for the Hebraic Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year period that comes after this dispensation, okay? Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Verse 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Okay. The book of Job, there are doctrinal truths in the book of Job. Yes. You know, about uh, happy is the man who endureth chastening and stuff like that. 
and whatnot and whatnot, yes. But in itself, Job, even for Old Testament saints, was also a book that you could look to for instruction and in righteousness. The book of Job is rich in instruction and in righteousness. Yes, there are doctrines within the book of Job. Yes, there are. But primarily, the book of Job is for instruction in righteousness. That kind of proves it right there. Okay? Kind of does. But like I was saying, I do not no longer believe that the book of Job was before the flood. Why is that? Cold. What are you talking about? Genesis chapter 8. Now, you got to remember. You got to remember, dear brethren, people. Before the flood. And uh, Ham, the video that the Lord had me do uh, a long time ago about Ham's sin will be in the description box. And I'll remember it because I wrote it down. Okay. But um, before the flood, man lived to be almost a thousand years old. 12 foot tall, oxygen was richer. We covered this in the previous video. After the flood, everything done changed. I believe that yes, rain come, came from heaven. Uh, and until that time, there was no rain on the earth. But what happened, I believe, is that from within the earth, psh, water spit, like spit it out from the earth. So it was raining and water coming up like a fountain, okay, with the fault line kind of thing, all right? And that kind of stuff destroyed the earth, okay? Not destroyed it, but when it was descending, you know, going away, like, well, where, all the, uh, where did all the water from the flood go? It's still here on the earth, you know? You know, the, in the seas, that some of that stuff in the sea, the oceans are extraordinarily deep, like miles deep, okay? So the flood water never went anywhere. It's just dispersed differently, okay? But things were very, very different, very different before the flood, okay? After the flood, things changed, okay? I believe that people didn't, you know, it started to rain because he opened up the windows of heaven and it started to rain. I believe that people never saw rain until the time of the flood. And you read in scripture how a mist came from the earth and watered everything. It didn't come from above until judgment upon the earth. And then it came shooting out like rockets. Okay? Cold. Now, are we to believe that, like, well, sometimes it gets chilly at night? Okay, yeah, maybe, yes. But the word cold itself, go to Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8, the very first appearance of the word cold is in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. But we're going to read verses 20 on to verse 22. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. Great promise right there, okay? All right. And also, too, for those of you evolutionists that uh, and even you sleazy believists that thinking man is getting better. OK, uh, no, man is progressively getting worse. OK, OK. Man is not evolving into something better. You crazy, crazy evolutionist. OK, go away. All right. Good verse to remind you of that. But also about a flood. That God is not, we have it right there. It's written down for us. That God is not going to destroy the earth in the fashion as he did with the flood. We got right there, okay? While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold, first appearance, check it out, and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Hmm. 
Hmm. That's the first mention of cold, and it's after the flood. Now, we read in the very first chapter of Genesis that there are times and seasons. Yes, but never cold until after the flood, because the atmosphere was dramatically changed because of the flood. Brethren, people, you got to remember, we can only, we got what is given us of the pre-flood world, okay? We don't really know what exactly entailed the pre-flood world. We know that man lived to be uh, near a thousand years old. They could grow up to 12, 12 foot tall and stuff like that. We know that the nutrients were different. We knew that the plants were a lot richer. We know all of that. We know that, okay? We, we, also, have the, we also have evidence that there was no rain until he opened up the windows of heaven to cast judgment with the flood, but that a mist came from the ground, okay? Scripturally speaking, cold, this is the first appearance of cold. The first mention of cold is after the flood. And you might be, uh, rightly so. So like what, Brad? You're saying it never got cold or anything uh, before the flood? I don't know. But the evidence right here is right here. The only, the very first mention of the word cold is after the flood. And you're like, uh, uh, okay, Brad, well, what does that mean? Job 24. Job 24. Job chapter 24. Check this out. Okay. This is something that, you know, I was just, you know, I, 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 almost finished with the book of Job and my daily devotional reading with the Lord, the Lord kind of is like, hey, Brad, check this out. It's like, Whoa. The Lord corrected me. Job 24, verse 7, verse 7, okay? Job 24, verse 7. Okay, look up the word cold in your concordance or King James Bible online. Okay, Job 24, verse 7. Oh, let's read uh, verses 1 on to verse 8. Okay, why seeing, and this is Job speaking, why seeing times are not hidden from the Almighty? Do they that know him not see his days? There, Job asking why. Kind of a rhetorical question, but then again, like I said, the book of Job, you can liken onto a book of questions. Okay? Some remove the landmarks. They violently take away flocks and feed thereof. They drive away the ass of the fatherless. They take the widow's ox for a pledge. They turn the needy out of the way. The poor of the earth hide themselves together. Behold, as wild asses in the desert go they forth to their work. Rising betimes for prey, the wilderness yieldeth food for them and for their children. They reap every one his corn in the field, and they gather the vintage of the wicked. They cause the naked to lodge without clothing. They have no covering in the cold. Okay? And remember, in the Garden of Eden, they made those coverings, the Lord made the coverings for what? For what? Cover their nakedness. Okay? Okay? They are wet with the showers of the mountains. They embrace the rock for want of shelter. Hmm. Hmm. And also, Job 37, Job 37, verse 9, Job 37, verse 9, from Elihu the whippersnapper. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see, verses 5, on to verse 10. Oh, uh, no. On to verse 11. Verses 5 on to verse 11 in Job 37. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he which we cannot comprehend. 
For he saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth, likewise to the small rain, and to the great rain of his strength. Okay? He sealeth up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. Then the beasts go into dens, and remain in their places. Out of the south cometh the whirlwind, and cold out of the north. Uh, north Pole, South Pole, okay? Okay? By the breath of God, frost is given, and the breath of waters is straightened. Also by watering, he wearieth the thick cloud. He scattereth his bright cloud. Let's read verse 12. And it is turned round about by his counsels, that they may do whatsoever he commandeth them upon the face of the world in the earth. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Psalm 147. Psalm 147. Just one verse. Psalm 147. Verse 17. He cast, uh, let's, uh, let's see, uh, let's read verses 12 onto the close of Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. For he hath strengthened the bars of thy gates. He hath blessed thy children within thee. He maketh peace in thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? Hmm. And you also read about, and we will cover this in the next video, about the questions that the Lord asked Job. <laughs> okay? Out of whose mouth comes the cold? Okay, all right. He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth his wind to blow and the waters flow. He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. As for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Hmm. Now also, Here's another thing about the book of Job, why I no longer, and like I say, you can find in some videos where I had said that I believe that the book of Job was before the flood. I, right here, right now, am repenting of that. I no longer, I no longer believe that because of what the Lord has showed me about this. And I thank you, some of you atheists who have pro prodded me uh, to consider these things. Not about Job, but, you know, because, like I said, I don't know anything about biology or whatever, stuff like that, and, or geometry or whatnot. I don't know those things. I, I don't. I don't. Okay? I don't. But, you know, when you search the Scripture, a lot of true science is in Scripture. The authorized version. Okay, don't mess with the Bible. Go with the scriptures, okay? But, okay? But, in the book of Job, verse 1, verse 1, here's something very interesting. There was a man in the land of Uz, Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. God, and we'll cover this more tomorrow, but God gave a glowing testimony of Job. And see, for us today, that testimony that God gave unto Job, we have in the righteousness, the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. Not ourselves when we save ourselves by our own belief, you wicked heretics. No, the imputed righteousness of Christ, okay? All right? That parallel to where God gives a glowing, 
glowing testimony of Job. We have that in the imputed righteousness of Christ to us saints who come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him. Okay? Call upon his name. Scream, cry out, beg him for mercy. He is merciful. Okay? But, us, us, us. Genesis chapter 10. Now, you're going to notice this. Genesis chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10. I'm going to let the scripture tell you this. Genesis chapter 10, verses 21 on to verse 25. Okay? Genesis chapter 10, verses 21 on to verse 25. On to Shem, one of the three sons of Noah and one of the three main kindreds that are on earth. Shem, the Asiatics. Ham, the African, the Indian. The Aztec. Okay? Japheth. The Europeans. Okay? The three main kindreds of the earth. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay? Shem. And remember, the Hebrew was taken out of Shem, not Japheth, not Ham. Okay? Uh -huh. Okay, let's continue. Unto Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder, even to him were children born. The children of Shem, pay attention, Elam and Esur and Arphaxad and Lud and Aram. And the children of Aram, line of Shem, Uz and Hur and Gether and Mash, and Arphaxad begot Salah, and Salah begot Eber. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, and in his days was the earth divided. Hey, Shem, you go over there. You, Ham, you go over there. Okay, you, Japheth, up there. Okay? God is a God of distinction. God divides. Okay? There ain't nothing wrong with that. Satan, let's all come together. Let's blur distinction. Okay? God is not the author of confusion. Okay? Let's continue in this verse. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. Okay? So we see in Uz related onto Shem. Now, okay, I gotta check the notes. First Chronicles. First Chronicles, chapter one, the <laughs> laborious, tongue-numbing, <laughs> if you read your scriptures aloud, uh, jaw-dropping. <laughs> you know, pronunciation is important, <laughs> yeah, try reading First Chronicles chapters 1 through 15. <laughs> I, I'm sure that could be overwhelming for some. I mean, like my wife, when, when she reads it, and I read it too, you know, um, it's part of the scripture. It's there for a reason. But to us, it's like, you know, really dry uh, to us, isn't it? But God has it there for a reason. And when my wife will read um, the book of First Chronicles, especially the first 15 chapters, she has this thing where it goes, reads for her. Like she, we have that thing called the Wonder Bible with the guy going through it and doing the pronunciation, okay? And even if you have, this one doesn't have a pronunciation key, um, that, that, uh, that's, this got to wreak havoc on some of you. It really does. But... First Chronicles chapter 1, verses 17 on to verse 19. The sons of Shem, Elam and Asur and Arphaxad and Lud and Aram and Uz, 
and Hol and Gethar and Meshach. And what are we reading to? Uh, verse 19. And our Faxa begot Shelah, and Shelah begot Eber, and unto Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, because in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. So, we see Uz. And Job was from the land of Uz. And you don't see Uz appear until what? After the flood. And a lot of people like to talk about, like, you know, Euphrates and stuff like that and Pison and whatnot. Um, you got to remember, the w world that we have now is not the world that was before the flood. Keep that in mind. Okay, so this is more evidence that acts that shows that Job is actually after the flood. But here's something else. Now go to Genesis chapter 36. Genesis chapter 36. Okay, when the Lord corrects me, he does a thorough job of it. And when I have made statements where the Lord has showed me a oh, Brad. Job wasn't written before the flood. I'm showing you the process that the Lord showed me. So, so you know, okay, this is the process. Like I told you, we're going to be doing some different things here. So you can see this, okay? This is the process, okay? Genesis chapter 36, verse 1, to begin. Now, these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Now remember this, and these, these stupid black Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> Look, you dear Hamitic people, it's impossible for you to be a Hebrew. As it is impossible for me, a Japhethite, to be a Hebrew. There are Shemites that are not Hebrews. Okay? Hebrews are descent from the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But remember, Esau was the brother of Jacob. Remember that. Okay? But, but and we're going to touch on this, Esau despised. <laughs> I don't hate you. I despise you. Uh, look at an older dictionary like um, Webster's 1828 or an Oxford before 1850 and look up the word despise. And you got people who's like, I don't hate you, I despise you. Um, you know, when you despise someone, it's kind of a bit, kind of a little bit more than hatred. <laughs> Come on. Give me a break. I'm just saying. But, okay. Now, Esau despised his birthright. You look up again, like I said, despise, and you'll see one of the links to despise is abhor, to abhor something. So when you got somebody who's using you as his tool, saying, I don't hate you, I despise you, um, be aware that actually he's showing you a little bit more than just hatred when he says he despises you. You're scum, man. You're scum. <clears throat> okay. At least some of the, the other enemies don't even go to your disgusting lengths. Shame on you. Okay. Shame on you. You're scum. You're scum. And I hope the one that you're manipulating to fight your battles, I hope he gets his head out from betwixt his buttocks. Shame on you, man. But what can I expect? Now, while we're in Genesis chapter 36 here, okay, I, I, I just lost my place, okay. Hebrews chapter 12 about Esau. Okay, we got it. I, I made mention of it. Now let's go read it. Hebrews chapter 12 about Esau. Esau was the brother of Jacob. But why didn't Esau 
inherit the blessing even though he was in line to do it. Why didn't he? That's simple. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 16 and 17. Okay? Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. And it is also ref uh, in Genesis chapter 25 that he despised his birthright. Watch out for people when they say, I don't hate you, I despise you. Uh, that's actually worse than hatred. Yeah, yeah, be aware of that. You so you think you're so clever and cute, don't you? you do. Anyway, now go back to Genesis chapter 30, uh, 36, picking up in verses 27 and 28. Remember Esau, check this out. 27 and 28. The children of Ezer in the lineage of Esau are these, Bilhan and Zavan and Akan. The children of Dishan are these, Uz and Aran. Hmm. Hmm. Another Uz. Another Uz. Go back to First Chronicles now. Go back to First Chronicles now. Okay. I'm, we're going through this so you can see the process that the Lord brought me through to change my mind, uh, to change my thing of thinking that Job was before the flood. Okay? This is how the Lord reproved me. It's like, Brad, Job is after the flood. Okay? First Chronicles, verse 35. Okay? Okay? The sons of Esau, Eliaph, Eliphaz, Reel, and Jeush, and Jalam, and Korah. Now skip to verse 42. The sons of Ezer, Bilhan, and Zavan, and Jakan, the sons of Dishan, Uz, and Aran. Why did we look at this? Well, first of all, the thing about two Uzzas. Remember, also, there are two Enochs. Yeah, there are two Enochs. You have Enoch mentioned in the first Enoch, mentioned in Genesis 4, verse 17, in the lineage of Cain. Okay? In the lineage of Cain, I believe it is. Let's go to that. Genesis chapter 4 to show you. Okay? To show you this. There are two Enochs, okay? Genesis chapter 4, verse 17, okay? Genesis chapter 4, verse 17. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, okay? And remember, the line of Enoch, the line of Cain, I believe, was exterminated in the flood. But you have another Enoch, okay, that stems from who? Jared, okay, Jared, and it is from this line, the line of Jared, that Enoch, okay, uh, uh, Genesis chapter 5, verses 19 on to verse 24, Genesis chapter 5, verses 19 on to verse 24, and Jared lived after he begot Enoch 800 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 960 and two years, and he died. And Enoch lived 60 and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not for God took him. And of course, it is from this Enoch Okay, not the Enoch of the line of Cain, but this Enoch, okay, from where Noah comes from. Okay, hence, I believe that in the book of Job, where you see, there was a, verse 1, there was a man in the land of Uz, 
whose name was Job, the land of Uz. Which Uz? Was it uh, of Esau? I don't think so. I think it was of Shem. And remember, Esau is, is of that lineage of Shem, but because he despised his birthright, he is not of the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Esau is not a Hebrew. Esau is Shemitic, but he is not a Hebrew. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? I do not believe that the Uz here is of the Uz of Esau. Okay? I do not believe that. All right? I believe that it is of the other Esau. Okay? And also another thing here about Job. When you look up the name Job itself, okay, you do not see the name Job ever mentioned in the book of First Chronicles. Okay? You don't. You don't. The very first appearance of the word Job, check this out. Genesis 46. Let's establish this. Okay? The book of Job, Job, and everything he went through, obviously was in the time frame of the patriarchs. Obviously. The law had not been given in a written form. The exodus had not happened yet. Okay? It was still the dispensation of the patriarchs. Okay? It was before the kings. It was before the judges. Okay? You don't see Israel mentioned. But here's this. In Genesis chapter 46. Genesis chapter 46. So, Job happened somewhere in Genesis. Where? I don't know. After the flood... I erroneously, and I repent of that, I was wrong. The Lord showed me, and I'm showing you how the Lord showed me, okay? So bear with me, all right? I was wrong. I was in error to believe that Job happened before the flood. Because of what the Lord has shown me, I now believe that Job is after the flood, okay? When precisely, I don't know. But see, we don't need to know to, to know that the instruction and righteousness that we can obtain from the book of Job is more than valid, okay? You have to remember that. But in Genesis chapter 46, check this out. Verse 13, okay? Issachar. One of the children of Israel, Issachar, of the sons of Issachar, Tola, Puva, and Job, and Shimron. Hmm. What's interesting, okay? What's interesting is that Issachar, Zebulun, these be the sons of Leah, the one that Jacob didn't love the most at the first. He loved Rachel, remember? Rachel was beautiful, was well favored, but Leah was tender eyed. Okay? I don't think I have that mixed up. But we see Job mentioned here in Genesis chapter 46. Now, is this the Job? Of the book of Job. In the book of Job, you do not see any mention of Israel. You see no mention of them sojourning to Egypt. You have in the land of us. Okay? In the land of us. So is this the is this Job, the Job of the book of Job? I don't know. I don't know. Okay? But like I said, you do not see the name of Job anywhere in the book of First Chronicles. 
uh, in uh, verses from chapters one on to verse fifteen. If there are, I didn't see them. If I if I missed it, hey, if Job is mentioned somewhere in the book of First Chronicles and I'm making an error, correct me and I'll pin it. And in the next video, I'll say, hey, I was wrong about it. I got no problems admitting when I'm wrong. When the Lord shows me I'm wrong, okay? All right. But. Now here, let's while we're riding this train, go to Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14. Okay, check this out. Ezekiel, come on, get there. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 14. Okay. Ezekiel 14, 14. Uh, actually, hmm. Let's read verses 12 on to verse 20 in Ezekiel uh, 14. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. That, obviously, is a reference onto the Job of the book of Job. Let's continue, okay? If I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land, and they spoil it, so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through because of the beasts, though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. Or if I bring a sword upon the, that land and say, sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter, they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. That's how bad things were. Just like Lot. Lot was the only righteous man that the Lord saw in Sodom. And just like the type of the redemption of the purchased possession, God sent his angel, you know, like, hey, come on, I can't do anything till I get you out of here. Okay? All right? That is obviously this Job. Okay? And we already covered about in James chapter 5, the patience of Job, okay? The patience of Job. Now, there comes up a lot of other questions, okay, about the book of Job, which I cannot answer. But there is one that I want to touch on. In Job 41, okay? In Job 41. Now, we're not going to, we're not going to read the, 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 the Job. We're going to address the book of Job itself tomorrow. Okay, obviously, as you can see why, okay? But Job chapter 41, uh, Job chapter 40, and also Job chapter 41, okay? You see the Lord talking about behemoth, which is not a hippopotamus, which is not a hippopotamus, okay? The corrupted Greek of the Strongs, don't trust that. Don't trust that. Which Greek? Which Hebrew? They were used as stepping stones to come to the perfect standard King James Version. Okay? All right? But, Behemoth is not a hippopotamus. Okay? Leviathan. Leviathan. fire-breathing dragon. A fire-breathing dragon? Hmm. Dragon. 
dragon. The first appearance of the word dragon, singular. Now, what is a dragon? I believe that dragons were dinosaurs. And Leviathan, the fire-breathing dragon. Mm -hmm. And today we have the Komodo dragon. All right. Were dinosaurs on the ark? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But when it comes to Leviathan, when it comes to Behemoth, which was not a hippopotamus, okay? It was not a hippopotamus, all right? Um, there are, I've heard people talk about Behemoth as being like a plesiosaur or something. I don't know, but some sort of dinosaur. And Leviathan, a fire-breathing dragon. But see, the thing you've got to remember about Job 41, his scales are his pride. This is a reference onto Satan. And Satan, well, first of all, go to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2. Nehemiah, chapter 2. Here's the first appearance of the word dragon. Okay? Excuse me one second. Nehemiah, chapter 2, verse 13. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well, and to the dung port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Okay? Now, dragons, plural, Deuteronomy 32. Again, after the flood. Okay? Were dragons dinosaurs? I believe so. Is there such a thing as a fire-breathing dragon? Yes, there was. Is there today? Don't know. I haven't seen one, but Lord said there was a fire-breathing dragon. Leviathan, okay, obviously describing a fire-breathing serpent at the least, okay? But Deuteronomy 32, verse 33. All right. <laughs> and check this out. Let's read verses 31 on to verse 33. For their rock, lowercase r, is not as our rock. Their rock that they came from millions and billions and zillions and quadrillions of years ago. Our capital, our rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, who created everything. Okay? Even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps and when it comes to dragons revelation chapter 12 again revelation chapter 12 ah revelation chapter 12 <clears throat> verse 3 and 4 and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And, he, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, Revelation chapter 12, we already read in verses 9 and 10, and that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Okay? Red dragon. All right? Leviathan in Job 41 is a reference on to Satan. Okay? All right? Okay? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. There will be links on that in the description box. But now here in Revelation chapter 12, the woman is not Mary. It's Israel. 
and the man child is it not evident that our Lord sprang of Judah Israel not Japheth not of Ham but of Israel the Hebraic line okay and also let's let's look a little bit more at this uh, Isaiah 27 okay Isaiah 27 one verse Isaiah 27 one verse first one actually if I can get there <laughs> uh, in that day the Lord with his sword and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan the piercing serpent even Leviathan that crooked serpent and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea well there's a distinction the dragon that is in the sea and the serpent it's one and the same the red dragon is Satan the serpent is Satan Leviathan talked about in Job is Satan that's who the Lord is talking about okay and also Isaiah 51 one verse verse 9 Isaiah 51 verse 9 <clears throat> awake awake put on strength O arm of the Lord awake as in ancient days in the generations of old art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon and also <laughs> Psalm 91 Psalm 91 Psalm 91 if I can get there <laughs> Psalm 91 verse 13 thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet and isn't it interesting that Satan himself in tempting Jesus quoted from Psalm 91 and that's something hmm. well hence I no longer believe that the book of Job was before the flood I now believe because of what the Lord has shown me that the book of Job was after the flood okay now see we can make a mountain out of a molehill okay but I have said that I believe that it was before the flood there are videos where I have said that I've even said that with brethren I was wrong okay I do not believe at all now that Job was before the flood I was an error. I was a mistake of that. The Lord, it was the cold thing. It was the cold thing. And the Lord's like, check this out, Brad. Check this out. It's like, oh, wow. Job was after the flood. It's like, yeah. Okay. And see, now, and here's the thing. We mustn't make a big ado to the actual when. It, it's similar like, uh, who wrote the book of Hebrews? God did. I do not believe it was Paul okay there are some out there who do that's fine okay the Pauline epistles that are attributed to Paul are all identify him as the author the book of Hebrews doesn't okay that's a pretty big thing that but see you know you don't want to uh, strain at a gnat and swallow a camel who wrote the book of Hebrews God to a man's hand yes God okay when was the book of Job obviously in the book of Genesis somewhere somewhere after the flood but we mustn't strain it in that and swallow the camel okay the reason why we went through all that is to number one to show you that I was wrong about that and to show you the process of how the Lord corrects me personally 
when I am wrong, he goes, takes me to his book and shows me. Okay? All right? And also, we did address some other things in this to prepare us for the video that will come tomorrow, probably. I'm not going to do it today. Okay, because if we were to start right now to get into the book of Job, to glean it as is written down here, this, this video would be six hours long. I love you. I, I, I do have things I got to do today. <laughs> okay, I do have, I, I, have, I, I have things I got to do today. Okay, so, so this will come tomorrow, but I wanted to go through this with you. Tomorrow, Lord willing, and if it isn't on Thursday, it will be Friday. The next video, Lord willing, that will come. We were going to, we are going to be going through Job, the book of questions. Okay, this is a part one to this, to kind of be kind of like an introduction, if you will, almost a two-hour introduction. But uh, just so you know, like I said, we were we we're going to be trying some different things here. Okay, so anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Look. You atheists, okay, my, my enemies can vouch for this. My enemies can vouch for this. I'm not educated, okay? I don't even have a good enough diploma, okay? I don't. My brethren can even vouch. It's like, no, Brad's not educated in the school system. No, okay? The fact that some, <laughs> hey, my enemies, come on. Even my enemies is like, I keep thinking about the only one of my enemies I actually have any respect for, the zombie guy. The only one I have any ounce of respect for. Um, even he'd be like, yeah, Brad, gone to a college. I've been accused of that. My enemies who see this, yeah. <laughs> my enemies like, <laughs> people have accused me. Yes, people have accused me of going to a college. My enemies, you go ahead and laugh at that because even I, you know, I'm not educated. I'm not, okay? I haven't, I don't have a good enough diploma. I nev never went to college, okay? Never, okay? Spirit of truth. Lord is that spirit. He leads and guides in all truth, okay? And when I'm wrong about something, the Lord shows me. Okay, so that is going to be it for this video. I have no idea what I'm going to call this video, but um, here it is. Uh, this is uh, before, you know, the next video. Like I said, we're going to be going through Job, the book of questions. Okay, that's what the Job, the book of questions. I'll remember that. Try to. But anyway, thank you for watching this. If you do, I hope uh, hope this has answered some of your questions and, uh, you know, um, I hope this has been helpful, at least. If not, then okay. <laughs> Thank you for praying for us. We love you. Um, our brother from North Dakota, um, I, I spake with him yesterday. Our brother from North Dakota has got a horrendous, like, infection, cough. He has a cough that sounds like he's dying. Oh, and you'll see this, brother. I love you dearly. Wow. When I was talking, you, you know, it's like, wow. Keep our brother from North Dakota in your prayers. And don't go, and that he don't go to a doctor. Because if he went to a doctor, guess what they would say that he has? Okay? You, you stubbed your toe. Guess what happens if you go to a doctor, especially right now? Uh, guess what they'll tell you you have? Okay? All right, I have a pimple on my buttocks. Oh, well, that's a sign of... Like this one thing in the link that a brother sent me about uh, red eyes, you know, redness of the eyes. That's a sign of... <laughs> but that is another story. See you in the next video.